Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 5, Heredity. This is the beginning of our second section of this particular module and now we're going to be looking specifically at cell reproduction, the processes involved in cell division and also DNA replication. And for the first of those, we'll be looking at mitosis. So our goal here is to model the processes involved in cell replication, including but not limited to mitosis. Now, obviously, this is one of these uh, particular outcomes that is best done in the laboratory or potentially as um, some modeling that you're going to be doing yourself. But I will we'll go through the steps in uh, the cell cycle in this particular video just to give you a bit of a setting and an idea of the sort of things that you might want to include in any model associated with the process of mitosis. So firstly, hopefully you've got some idea about uh, some of the reasons why cells divide in the first place. Maybe you've had a look at mitosis in the past and you've got a general understanding of the sequence of events that happens during mitosis. But what we want to try and do is move you forward so that you can actually model this process and explain each of the key stages in the cell cycle. So let's have a look. Firstly, there are a number of different reasons why cells divide. And they divide in one of two ways. So cell division is primarily about mitosis, which is really the first couple of things here. Uh, growth in multicellular organisms in order for them to increase the number of cells. Um, they need to go through this process of mitotic division. Uh, repair of damaged cells and tissues is a second reason why cells may divide and also replacement of cells. This can include old, worn out cells. Uh, we, you may be aware of the fact that our um, blood cells, for example, uh, continue to be replaced on a, on a regular basis. And, um, and so these are all reasons why cells might divide mitotically. We've also looked at unicellular organisms and obviously if an organism is unicellular, then it is only one cell and the easiest thing for it to do is to, uh, once it reaches a certain size, to divide, copy everything uh, perfectly, identically and produce daughter cells. Now there is another reason why cells divide, but it's a different type of division. And in fact, we're going to be looking at that in the next of these series of videos. And that is the process of meiosis. But this is specifically related to um, gonads or the process of sexual reproduction. And so it's something that we're going to be looking at in uh, a future video. This one, however, is going to look more at mitosis and focus in on the cell cycle. So primarily this is about normal cell function and cells growing, carrying out their um, usual processes. We have talked about specialized cells, cells differentiating for the purpose of having uh, specific roles in multicellular organisms. And so this first stage, which we might call the G1 stage, um, is very much a growth stage and a normal functioning stage. So uh, we can put here sort of normal function. So everything that a cell does that's part of the way that it would normally behave is usually carried out here in this G1 stage. There has been, um, I guess, a tendency to start using this term interphase as a term that describes three sections, the G1 stage, the S stage, and the G2 stage. And then we kind of talk more about the mitotic phase, which uh, you can see is actually over here on the uh, right side of the slide that's in front of you. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. So once the cell's been going through its growth phase for a while, carrying out its normal functions, then there is a trigger. Um, usually we know that the, one of the big, um, I guess one of the big things that we talk about a lot in biology is the surface area to volume ratio. And we don't see large cells. And the reason for that is cells become inefficient once they reach uh, a certain size. Their surface area to volume ratios now are too low. Um, the surface area is not sufficiently high enough for um, exchange to occur quickly enough for the cell to be uh, efficient. And so that's usually one of the triggers that um, initiates this process of cell division. So at the S phase, we have DNA synthesis. We have replication. 
And that's something, again, we're going to look at in a little bit more detail, and we'll do that uh, also on one of our future videos. After replication occurs, there's a, there's a gap two stage, there's a G2 phase uh, in which uh, there's a little bit of, um, I guess, preparation, um, um, proofing in the coding, production of important proteins that are, are going to be enzymes that are going to be part of the process of mitosis. All of that stuff's happening at this next G2 level here. Following that, we get into the actual process of mitosis, the cell division part of this. Now, the goal is that we have one parent cell producing two identical daughter cells. So in order to do that, all of the information on the uh, in, in the nucleus, all of the DNA needs to be copied precisely and um, and completely so that the whole of that uh, genome is now replicated. We have two copies of it. What we see happening is the um, duplication of the chromatid. So you now have things that look like little crosses um, and they, the membrane, the nuclear membrane at this stage has broken down so that process, copying process can occur. And we've also had duplication of all of those um, important cellular organelles so that the two cells that are going to be produced at the end of all of this are going to be two perfect copies of the original. So what happens now is that the chromosomes, and, and this is now really talking about a sequence as you go through this sequence, and the sequence is reproduced in your textbook and in plenty of other places as well. The key to it is this. What we want is all of the chromosomes pairing up Lining up on the equator, think about the cell in the same way you think about the Earth. Equator in the center, right across the middle, and poles at either end. So that's where the centrosomes are going to move. They're going to form a spindle or fibers running between the two poles. The chromosomes are going to all line up on the equator. And then basically one set are going to go in one direction and the other set in the other direction. And as you see, as we go through the stages, you see metaphase where we have this lining up of our chromosomes on the equator and our poles um, supporting the spindle between them. Then you see this migration of the two identical sets of chromosomes off towards the poles. This is the anaphase stage. In telophase, now we've got all of the chromosomes sitting in each of the two different regions. And obviously what we now need to do is reform that nuclear membrane and have the cells actually completely divide into two separate individuals. And that process is known as cytokinesis. So here's a nice little summary of all of what's going on here. The G1 stage, which is the growth stage, normal functioning stage. Then the DNA replication, which is our S stage and our sort of copy proofing stage, um, our uh, prep of proteins stage which um, can also be in the form of enzymes. Specifically, those will be enzymes that are involved in these, these subsequent processes. So interphase is really um, all of this stuff happening here. And then we get into really the mitotic division processes, which is what's here. And again, the key here is the sequence of events that's occurring. The duplication of the genetic material, the lining up of those, uh, those paired chromosomes, chromatids sitting on the equator, the movement of those, the migration of those as, as full sets, one in one direction towards one pole, the other in another direction towards the opposite pole, uh, and then um, the reformation of a nuclear membrane to contain those uh, and the actual subsequent pinching off of the cells in cytokinesis where we get two new cells. One more diagram, I guess uh, you can't have too much of this. Another way of looking at it, I guess one of the important things is just to make sure um, that you get these pictures in your mind because remember that the, the important thing that we said that's part of our goal, our learning goal or our learning intention for this was to actually model this process. So that's what we want uh, that's what we want you to be able to do. You can have a look at the stages of this um, onion onion root tips. 
are a good place to start looking for cells that are undergoing this process of mitotic division. Uh, sometimes you can find prepared ones. You, you, you might already have some. We've had a little bit of a look at some of those already, not overly successfully, but can see a few important um, distinctions in the different stages when we look at the cells. And that's obviously one very important thing. We don't find when the cells are dividing that they're all going through exactly the same stage of mitotic division at exactly the same moment of time. We see different cells in different stages, and that's important too. But the other thing about your modeling is to make sure that you get this sequence. So you look at the sequence, you look at specifically what is happening to those chromosomes, lining up, separating out one copy to each side, and the reformation of that nuclear membrane, and then the separation of that into two cells. That's kind of the same message repeated the third time now, but hopefully what you have is enough information to be able to construct a model of mitosis and explain exactly what is happening and also why mitosis is such an important process in living organisms. Thanks for watching.